tonight, Steve Gordon, Vicky Paparo, and Frank Stagliata. Anderson, another great feed to Mackey. Yes, south foul. Give it in, Malcolm Mackey. Kodak Bandit, so let's take his picture. Anderson solo. Yes, and a foul. He set him up perfectly, utilizing the screen. Great look, that superb quickness that he had at Archbishop Malloy, where he's heralded as one of the best ever in New York City. Defense a little bit slow, rotating over. See, right now he's going to use that screen. And there he is. That's all he needed, that little step. He set Hurley up with the big screen. We should make mention, you saw at halftime, Thomas Hill is also coming to the game for the Blue Devils, number 12. Great job at hedging defensively by Palmer. And Barry loads up from three. Now he's got him one-on-one. -on -one. And he'll take it. That was a Trump two. Palmer has it taken away by Anderson, and there's John Barry. And Barry, he can jump better than his papa. I'll tell you, Rick, you couldn't get up like that, Rick Barry. Michigan State really has to have some pride as we see a little one-on-one -on -one move. Watching Kenny Anderson now, a little one-on-one -on -one against Hurley. Hurley stays right up on him. He makes him shoot the jumper over the top. Excellent shot by Anderson, but excellent defense by Hurley. Hurley lifted his pivot foot. Anderson with the pull-up J. Good shot selection. He's my mom. I, said, I can't say hello to your mom. There he is, one-on-one. -on -one. A little change of direction, goes around the back. Too much quickness right there for Bobby, so he goes right by him. Now, I'm not allowed to say hello to his mom, Joan. Am I, Joan Anderson? Am I allowed to say hello to Joan? Joan, I think you just got a hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> when you're Kenny Anderson, we could say hello. That's right. 
And a year or two from now, Vital wants a percentage of the cut. <laughs> no, not really. I just want him to see him be a happy guy and enjoy his career. Oh, well, he'd be a wealthy. These two guys, this is just great competition between two outstanding players. Well, they really love competing. Look at the two of them talking to each other. Look at Kenny saying, I'm going to invite you over to dinner, Bobby. I really like you. Come on. Olive Bill Lampier. AC Earl's going to make my team from out of Iowa. I'm looking for three other guys for my all Tri-Divi team. So if you find them, let me know, Brando. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Kenny Anderson in the NBA is going to be an outstanding point guard. He told me tonight the, most, the player he really favors the most, who he really likes in the NBA, you'll never guess. Kevin Johnson from out of Phoenix. He said, I love his style. One of the greatest passes of all time. Anderson is shooting too because Duke has committed the 10 foul limit. The new rule instituted this year. Georgia Tech, should they commit one more foul, will have Duke at the line for two as well. A lot of big time scribes out here tonight looking at Corsi Furman, Fisher, one of the outstanding for Duke. Shot clock is off. That's the game back. clock you see in the lower right-hand portion of your screen, and Anderson will solo. He utilized that screen so well. He's up with the goaltending ball. Anderson posts up early and uses his size and his ability. Anderson, too that was strong. Poor shot by Kenny right there. Oh, and he took it right away from Grant Hill. I love the way he goes between his legs. Look at that. Little show bears get the mustard out. Early really forcing on his shot, not getting that comfortable follow through. Look at him right now, look at the intensity on defense of Hurley. Head to head, he says, come on Anderson, try to beat me. What, are you kidding? Anderson blew right by him on a change in direction. There's a change in direction, now goes around the back to change direction. Takes the ball up into the lane, dumps it off. Kenny Anderson. Everywhere the ball is, Mr. Anderson. Here comes the run. Anderson, excellent rebounder for a little guard. Nice look. Mackey! What a great look. Anderson to Mackey, and they love it at the Philadelphia. They say he's awesome! that system because of talent year in and year out. We're going to change the direction between the legs. Loves it, and there's the great look. He makes that pass off the dribble. Big people. They got to go to Mackey and Geiger. Oh, Anderson what? with a steal. Too quick here. Too quick here. He says, no, Palmer, you can't catch me in this place. And if he does catch him, he can't challenge. He's playing with four fouls. Too strong. Anderson with the long rebound. Again, he'll take early baseline and beat him. Is he explosive? Is that quickness? You put him in a 20 on a perimeter, he can also guard people on a baseline. Now they are asking him to guard the big guy, Mackey. Kenny's putting on a show now. It's a Kenny Anderson hour. It's K.A. time, baby. He has 25, equaling his mark at Cameron Indoor Stadium three weeks ago. But this is a good 25. The one at Cameron Indoor Stadium was a bad 25. Look out. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, yeah. yes. oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Now you take a look at this. I mean, Isaiah Thomas is jumping out of his seat right now. Three changes direction between his legs. Cole says, what do I got to do? I can't believe this guy. This is impossible. Now take a look at this one right here. One change around him. A little shake, rattle and roll. A little shake and bake. I mean, that's just like on the streets of New York City. He says, no, Hurley. No way tonight in my living room floor. This is my baby. Uh, you could have been singing half of Big East ACC Wednesday. Arnaseka always shortens the game. Anderson, when you can play, you can zone, you can play diamond in one, triangle in two, the great ones always respond. Without a doubt, one of the five best high school players in the nation. And then when I had him in a McDonald's game, I could just see that those statements were valid. Barry. Yes, Barry delivers. He delivers a big one. I'll tell you one thing. But of a 1-4 set this time, and Anderson will find a seam. Made a good look, but Duvall doesn't deliver it. But he does, so he gets it right back to Anderson, and Anderson says, hey, it's my time, it's Anderson time! The ball. <laughs> he's 
plows. Well, he used all of the iron there. He loves this. He absolutely loves it. Not even, Mike doesn't love it seeing him at the free throw line. You know, Mike coached him during the World Championship games, and so what a great kid to coach. In the Goodwill Games. Silver and Redfield for Smith. And the big rebound by Mackey. Here comes Anderson. Anderson for three. I watched him warm up. I think more than anybody else. Kenny Anderson is the key to the club because he gets the ball to all of the scores for Georgia Town. Staying his pass inside goes astray. Anderson on the run. Scott for three. He'll get it to you if you open. Dennis Scott can shoot shot for shot for anybody in the country. 6-0, Georgia Tech. Anderson with the steal. That's the ball is something to watch. Johnny McNeil on the scoring end. Timeout on the floor as Georgia Tech has run off eight quick points. Eight be kept up to date on the progress of this game. With scoring reports and highlights. Montgomery. Rejected by Malcolm Mackey. Here's Anderson. Did a good job coming across the basket to keep him in for Redfield. Mike McCloskey, 6'10 sophomore out of Detroit. Anderson coming right back, throws it up. That will count. Let's take a look at Tech. To watch Ball State take on Nevada Las Vegas in West Regional play out in Oakland. And you will be kept up to date on the progress of this game with reports and highlights. It's back. Scott for three. Smith tried to grab the rebound, tried it again, and it got away from him twice. Kenny Anderson. Well, Steve Smith is complaining against every shot, and it make it really difficult on you. Anderson for three. Flat-footed. The shot that was flat-footed. O'Brien Oliver on track, and the best way to do it is get the ball into Kenny Anderson's hand and just, just let this beat his man and draw. Here's Scott, top of the key for three. Anderson to the baseline. Oh, is he quick? Oh. Anthony Smith down on the baseline. Three-pointer doesn't go, rebounded by Scott. Anderson leads the charge back, he'll put it up. Three-pointer is good. 17 for Kenny Anderson. In addition, they brought in Kirk Manns. They got in a little better defensive team with the exception of Manns, who's a outstanding score from the three-pointer. Anderson is Sixteen. Mismatch down low. Mans is on Scott, and now they switch back. Anderson spins away. I mean, like it was nothing. Anderson from McNeil. That's where the ball goes. This young man has so much points, and he's not rushing at all. Brown open for the three, nails it. Carl Brown. Three points. Nobody thought they could, and Michigan State feels the same way. Anderson with the steal. And Anderson is fouled going to the basket. And a few words pass in between sophomore Mark Montgomery and freshman Kenny Anderson. Well, Montgomery and Anderson are getting into it, because Anderson is stepping up to the challenge. He stole the ball from him, so he was telling Montgomery, I got you twice. I stole the ball from you, and you came down and fouled me. I got you twice. I guess they're keeping Anderson from New York, and part of the game was letting the other guy know who's doing what to whom. I guarantee you Michigan State is very aware of the fact that Kenny Anderson is having a superb night. He averages 20 points a game. He now has 23. Half a minute to play. Anderson inside. Off the glass. Got the bucket and Georgia Tech will call timeout. 25 seconds to play. It's a two-point game. Michigan State on top. Smith pressuring Anderson on the inbound. He comes in a hurry. Down the lane. And a timeout is called. Six seconds to play, and Kenny Anderson was like a dart. A huge performance. Missed it. Here comes Anderson. Two seconds at the buzzer.
table right now. It is a two-pointer. They're going to call it a two-pointer, and you look like you're going in overtime, but you got to say the momentum looks like it's favoring Georgia Tech. They don't want to waste it down there on the floor. Well, Kenny Anderson hit right here. Steve Smith almost gets a hand on it and knocks it away from him, but somehow he keeps control of it, gets back, and he would prefer to go left. And you'll see clearly his right foot is on the line. The official made the right call. The official Charlie Range at the bottom of your screen from Fremont, California, had the perfect view. Now that's John Clockerty trying to convince Bobby Cremens that the call is correct. And there's no question about what we just saw, Greg. The call is correct. Now it's time. Southeast Regional Semifinals. We have have a minute 55 to play in overtime. Michigan State leading by one, and now it's Georgia Tech leading by one as Kenny Anderson delivers another two points, 31 on the night. Young fella says, get on my back. I'm Redfield oh, he's got launches look. the three-pointer. From the Omni in Atlanta, Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech against the Lions of Loyola Marymount. Good evening, I'm Bob Carpenter, and it all started here three nights ago when they went three overtime. Georgia Tech and Kenny Anderson in a thriller knocked off U Durham's Bulldogs, and that was quite a ball game. U Durham came back to win earlier tonight. Bobby Kremens tries to do the same here against LMU. Larry Conley, a ball game like this, it'll be up-tempo. It could be an unbelievable night for Kenny Anderson. Well, it could be. You know, you look at the Loyola Marymount team that arguably played against the best center in the country on Wednesday. Tonight, they may be playing against the best guard in Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson handles the basketball as well as anybody in this country. Watch this play from Wednesday night's highlights. Yes, he can do that. He doesn't have to, but when he needs to do it, he can do it any way he wants. You want to look at some stats? Look at this. 40 points and 55 minutes of playing time against Georgia wins. In fact, per game now, he's averaging over regulation 41 minutes per game play. Loyal to Marymount. He'll swing to the right side. Anderson nice fake pass. the shot. Geiger for two. And Kenny Anderson already has an assist. Bobby you know that for the Jackets, they outlet to Anderson. from the line against Georgia the other night. Three-point play. There's Terrell Lowry. Right side for Craig Holt. Anderson steals. Here we go. Look at those hands. Not even contested. Hill Holt checked in for Georgia Tech. There's Hill kicking it on the break to Anderson. And he did a 360 again. Seven points for Kenny. two and a little too strong with the shot. Geiger sees Barry right wing. Hold back the ball. Oh, good pass. Anderson scores and he's fouled. Good pass. Good cut and makes a bounce pass. That's what John Barry did. Oh. Anderson with his second three-point play of the night to Loyola Marymount for his last two years. Kenny Anderson now with 13 on the night. He averages 24, five rebounds and seven assists per game. I think the most impressive is the in the back play is where it really gets down to the nitty gritty. Tech getting ready to go back to the ACC and of course, Loyola Marymount going to the WCC. Kenny Anderson with 18. Loyola, Mar Loyola Marymount now has changed their defense. They've gone away from the zone. Kenny Anderson takes a man. 20 points. Well, they're down by just eight now. The Malik for Anderson. That's a three-point attempt, and he buries it. 23 for Kenny Anderson. Watch Anderson with the basketball. Yeah, we're close to December 25th. Three French hands, two turtle dogs, and a Kenny Anderson spin. That's what Georgia Tech fans like to have. They've seen a few spins from him in the first half. 23 points. He's also set up a couple of baskets. And meanwhile, Terrell Lowry of Loyola Marymount. Good half for him as well. Geiger looking to get it in. 11 point game with 15 15 to go. Anderson, left hander, three pointer. And that's 26. Barry. Anderson with the offensive rebound. He does everything. He rebounds, he passes, but good defense. Not alone. There's Green to free Peabody underneath. Rookie pass down in there by Harrison. Peabody with three on the day. Look at that pass. Ryan Hill breaks the pressure.
like to go for size. This guy's got so much talent. I just don't know how you can pass up somebody like that. After conference again, he's a member of the ACC. During his uh, Omni performances of the past in five games back out. Very switching it. Anderson runs by Slater. What a touch. 37 for Kent. Again, well off the mark. on this young man who's only a, coming out of his sophomore year. Well, especially the fact that he's slight in size. But the greatest evaluator of high school talent in, in America is a guy named Harry Garfinkel. And he came out and stated when he was in high school, he's the greatest guard in the history of New York City basketball. Just think of the great ones who have played here in this area. And then for the people to be able to be able to see him now, you know, throughout his entire career. It's a, it's a real shot in the arm for basketball in this area. Well, I think you see some happy family members there. He's going to be close to home. You know, I think the great thing about Kenny Anderson, he showed in his freshman year, is that he's actually a better player when he's got better players around him. And I think that that's the way you evaluate him. Last
Last year he shot 43% when he was asked to take all the shots. When he had Dennis Scott, when he had Brian Oliver, they went to the Final Four and played such great basketball. And I think it's a guy, when you look at the NBA today, you be in the way the game is played, you must have a great point guard to get to the top level in the NBA, to get to where you want to go, to be a champion. And I think this kid has all the ingredients to take them there. Well, I'll tell you what, Petrovic is over playing in, Yugos, in, the, in the world tournament right now. I know he's happy because that guy, all he'll have to do is spot up as the off guard in New Jersey. Dennis Scott was selected in the draft last year as an underclassman went to Orlando and played at Georgia Tech with Kenny Anderson. So Kenny Anderson is selected by New Jersey. He'll stay at home to play his professional basketball. And now here's the personal look with Kenny Anderson and Craig Sick. Well, thanks, Bob. They say if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. You've been a pro for five minutes and already got a standing ovation here in the garden. Congratulations. Last night you went over to Rago Park, I believe, and said goodbye. One final look before turning pro. Kind of emotional. Now you have to go back and tell them you're staying. Yeah, definitely. You know, I never feel, you know, I'm just honored, you know, that um, New Jersey has so much confidence in picking me. They had a tough decision, you know, with me and Billy Owens, and they chose me, and it, it was a great feeling. When you left Georgia Tech early, an emotional decision, you were even crying at the press conference, so was your mother. Now we see Joan here moments ago, tears of joy. Yeah, definitely, you know, it's one of the reasons, you know, not a, not a big part of the reason, but one of the reasons I, you know, decided to leave school early, to take care of my mother and my family, and just something, you know, that I'm excited about. Well, the boy stays at home, I know she's awfully happy, congratulations, congratulations. Growing up on the playgrounds of New York City, Kenny's basketball inspiration was nurtured from an early age, as he seemed always to have NBA greatness in his future. My uncle and my brothers, they always said I always wanted to carry a basketball or play with one, and when guys would take it away, I'd start crying. We lived in an apartment complex where we overlooked the basketball court, and I'd look out at maybe 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, I'd look downstairs and I'd see a couple of guys playing, and it'd be him. He'd be out there playing at 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night in the dark, and, and you couldn't really tell who, who was who. And you say, wow, somebody's playing really well out there. Like, oh, that's Kenny. Don't worry about it. That's little Kenny. From a city that has produced a long line of legendary point guards, including Bob Cousy and Tiny Archibald, Kenny is perhaps its most celebrated, standing alone as the only player to be named All-City four consecutive years. He's hope. Kenny Anderson's the best high school guard I've ever seen anywhere. First time I saw him in the sixth grade, he was special.
player in high school this year, Kenny Anderson. He's with the member of our broadcast team, Cheryl Miller. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Kenny, they can really use you on the court. What's the game like this week? Uh, Okay, the expectations are going to be real high in Georgia Tech. How are you going to handle the pressure? Well, it's no pressure. I mean, I'm the incoming freshman. And, you know, we have seniors uh, on the team, and I'm just going to go in there and play my hardest. You know, whatever happens, happens. All right, Kenny, we hope your ankle's feeling better. Let's go back to Gary. making their first appearance are the Nets Derek Coleman and Kenny Anderson. To be there and, and starting in, in that position is great and then to have you know my teammate on the team as well you know at least I know I get the ball a little bit. <laughs> I'll definitely be looking for big fella. I wasn't really focused on I'm gonna make the all-star team, I'm gonna make the all-star team. I just let my performance do the talking I think you know that's one of the reasons I, I'm selected to the team. I had the master plan.
caravan on my way to Maryland with my man Two Text to take over this project. City has had a long history of playground legends, but none of them were any bigger than a backcourt wizard from Queens by the name of Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson, motherfucking legend, one of my idols. Growing up on the playgrounds of New York City, Kenny's basketball inspiration was nurtured from an early age, as he seemed always to have NBA greatness in his future. Mr. Chibs, Kenny Anderson, Left Rack City in the building. Kenny! Hey, like that, like that, Kenny! I ain't gonna lie, cause he's, <laughs> he's the legend to me. I'm from Left Rack City, it's Left Rack City. This is in Queens, we're in Queens now. All the ballers are from Queens. We got myself. You know, between the legs, behind the back, crossover. This, you know, variety, you know what I'm saying? Kenny Smith. Kenny, duck, lead, fire, oh, 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 the cold one three! He drilled it! Mark Jackson. Jackson behind the back to Ewing. Assist number 15 for Mark Jackson. Hey for Austin. Let's get to my loop. Austin banks it in again. Through the Midtown Tunnel, you can take all the 59th Street Bridge, mm -hmm. right to Queens. You know, Left Rack City. Yeah, get that pass going. Oh. <laughs> left Rack motherfucking city. We lived in an apartment complex where we overlooked the basketball court. And I'd look out at maybe 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, and I'd look downstairs and I'd see a couple of guys playing, and it'd be him. He'd be out there playing at 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, in the dark, and, and you couldn't really tell who, who was who. And you say, wow, somebody's playing really well out there. Like, oh, that's Kenny, don't worry about it, that's little Kenny. Left Rack City, man, that's where it all started. Queens were the guys who we always thought we were the thinking man's player. We understand the science of the game. It was Kenny Smith who set it up. I want to play against the best and see where I, you know, uh, add up, you know, against the best. John Stockton is in front of me. Stockton, oh. no look Griffin. Stockton down the middle, split the defenders, go to the hoop. Gary Payton right there. Gary rips to the road, goes the other way into the lane, up top, Kemp is there! Lead pass to Kemp, he'll play it down! What a love! Just to get yourself riled up to really work at your craft, you gotta work hard. Where did your flash come from? I guess, let's just looking at like Pearl. His ability to get to the rim at that, at that stage in college was never been seen before. Leaving guys in, in their footsteps, he almost disappeared when he was on the court. Pearl Washington, Rod Strickland, Kenny Smith. That's the history of New York, you know, point guards. That's the base, those guys right there. Pearl, Kenny Smith, Rod Strickland, Mark Jackson. Those are guys I wanted to be like. An incredible court vision to go along with tremendous passing skills and the ability to get to the basket with ease using his trademark shake and bake move. I try to take a little bit from their game and put it in my game. Here's Anderson to the hoop. Kenny oh, Anderson. Oh, he's an artist with the basketball. And here's Anderson. Oh, you give me a break. Give me a break. That's New York guard era. The pearl goes up against Ewing and he's got it. The crowd comes to life.
Archbishop Malloy High School. Um, excellence, not only basketball, uh, but academically. Kenny became the first freshman ever to play varsity under another New York City basketball icon, head coach Jack Curran. For about two or three minutes, I said, he's definitely going to be on the varsity. He's Despite not starting as a freshman, Kenny set the city's all-time scoring record with over 2,600 points that turned him into a New York City legend. Me and Kareem is the only four all-city players ever. All-city. He was all-city for four years, right? Four Straight. years. Quickly becoming the most publicized and decorated player of his generation. From a city that has produced a long line of legendary point guards, including Bob Cousy and Tiny Archibald, Kenny is perhaps its most celebrated, standing alone as the only player to be named All-City four consecutive years. He's the greatest guard in the history of New York City basketball. Kenny Anson's the best high school guard I've ever seen anywhere. First time I saw him in the sixth grade, he was special. Kenny Anderson, it's showtime now for our Christian Malloy. He goes between the legs, left-handed, right-handed. Either way it goes, Kenny Anderson is an all-around complete player. He did things on the court. Damn, I'm glad that my career is almost ending because <laughs> I didn't want to be on the same court. When did you know you're good? 85 when we won the city championship. My deception in basketball about angles, and I'm left-handed. So that's just how I was able to do the things I, I was doing on the court. Kenny would become the most recruited player ever, eventually signing with Bronx native Bobby Kremens to play at Georgia Tech. When you went to Georgia Tech, yeah. we went crazy. I'm like, this skinny little kid is going to help us get to the Final Four? I don't see it. Down the lane. <laughs> and then I was introduced to the phenom of Kenny Anderson and what he was and what he was about. Two seconds at the buzzer. It counts! <laughs> this young kid from New York that came in and made life easy for everybody. Are you talking about when you beat Shaq? Yeah, oh, you oh. already knew! Kenny Anderson comes away with it one-on-one, -on -one, now two-on-one. Dennis Scott's going to pull up from three-point land. Eventually, that whole thing of us being lethal, uh, all of us averaging over 20 points a game, was something that, you know, caught on nationwide. Combination of Kenny, Dennis Scott, and Brian Oliver were unstoppable. In 1990, they won the ACC championship and made a trip to the Final Four, earning the nickname Lethal Weapon 3. And they've been led by a brilliant playground legend who has already established a compelling style of his own. The Yellow Jackets do it. Georgia Tech, an ACC champion. We all mixed well. You know, the Lethal Weapon 3, we, we uh, mixed well. It was a good gel, and I was just orchestrating everything. I miss it, yeah. Because when you're having one of them big time games, it's there's just, nothing like oh, it, right? It's just so exciting. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, that, it's just that. Yeah. Our officials tonight Steve Gordon, Dickie Paparo, and Frank Stagliano. Anderson, another great feed to Mackey. Yes, and a foul. Anderson solo. Yes, and a foul. He set him up perfectly, utilizing the screen. Great look, that superb quickness that he had at Archbishop Malloy, where he's heralded as one of the best ever in New York City. We should make mention, you saw at halftime. I'll tell you one thing, Kenny Anderson in the NBA is going to be an outstanding point guard. And he'll take it. Taken away by Anderson, and there's John Barry. Anderson with the pull-up J. Watching Kenny Anderson now, a little one-on-one -on -one against Hurley. Hurley stays right up on him. He makes him shoot the jumper over the top. But they really love competing. Look at the two of them talking to each other. Look at Kenny saying. Me and Bobby went at it. I just always wanted to destroy him and do good against him. <laughs> Shot clock is off. 
That's Steve the game Kubek. clock you see in the lower right-hand portion of your screen, and Anderson will solo. Anderson posts up Hurley and uses his size. Kenny Anderson. Here comes a run. Anderson, excellent rebounder for a little guard. Nice look. Mackey! What a great look! In McDonald's game, I could just see that those statements were valid. Barry. Yes, Barry delivers. He delivers a big one. Anderson with a steal. Too quick here. Too quick here. He says, no, Palmer, you can't catch me in this race. It was just, you know, saying he was a better leader. He's a better point guard. Right, he went right. to Duke. Yeah. So I was kind of fed up with all that. Karnaseka always shortens the game. Anderson. Again, he'll take Hurley baseline and beat him. Is he explosive? Is that quickness? He's a great competitor, yeah. man. Bob yeah. Hurley, he's cool. Hurley. Great competitor. Went to Duke. The Hurley's but, is good, you know, too. I had to give and it to him. Now when they were asking him to guard the big guy, back to I was just on one, you know, when we right. played that move. One at Cameron Indoor Stadium was a bad 25. Look out. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 yes. yes. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I'm going to do a little dance. Oh, that's awesome. He's a 3S man. He's super. He's sensational. He's superb. He's a 3S man. He's super. He's sensational. He's superb. Bob Hurley, Georgia Tech, when I came, you know, put it behind my back like two, three times and shot the floater. I mean, Isaiah Thomas is jumping out of his seat right now. Three changes direction between his legs. Hurley says, what do I got to do? I can't believe this guy. But um, that's my man. He's a fierce competitor. He one of the best point guards ever to play college ball. One change around him. A little shake, rattle and roll. A little shake and bake. I mean, that's just like on the streets of New York City. <laughs>
This is what I do, man. This is my shit right here, you heard? It's either this or nothing at all. You can't tell me shit about hip hop. You can't tell me shit about rap music, dog. Fuck out my face, bitch. The most heralded basketball recruit in Georgia Tech history, Queens, New York native Kenny Anderson spent just two seasons with the Yellow Jackets, but helped guide them to the school's first Final Four in 1990. Anderson arrived as the National Player of the Year and immediately drew raves for his scoring ability and playmaking. The New Jersey Nets select Kenny Anderson from Georgia Tech. I started my career with the Nets. Willis right. Reed was the GM, the great right. New York Knicks. Right. Uh, right. He was the GM at the time. He drafted me number two. Number two. Number two. I didn't say yeah. your second yeah. round. Number yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. No, you was yeah. ill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, you man. Was <laughs> <laughs> he again became a trendsetter with his distinctive style. Here's Anderson to the hook. And goes by. He played with new determination and resolve. Kenny Anderson used to kill us when he was on the net. What a sweet move by Kenny Anderson! For whatever reason, New York breeds great point guards who never play for the Knicks. I laid everybody with the left. Anderson, gotta love it! One of the game's most innovative young players. Kenny Anderson seems to possess a limitless wellspring of creativity. Anderson through the lane. Oh, oh. Instinct, you know, you're coming down the break. You're not going to say, hey, I'm going to slow down and wait for my teammate to make that pass to the left. You're just going to play off instinct. Kenny the kid through the lane. Oh, oh, slight of hand. You have to know with how your players want the ball, where they want the ball, and you have to run the team. Here is Kenny Anderson. Comes Coleman on the film. Uh -oh. He helps everybody's game. He helps me out tremendously, and just his way of getting to the basket, you never think, you know, he can squeeze through those little holes, but um, he manages like Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> now with Special K running the break and DC filling the lanes, the Nets have a one-two punch that figures to be among the league's best for years to come. Derek is already one of the best power forwards in the NBA. And you have uh, Kenny, who's basically still learning the game. Still, he's one of the best point guards in the, in the league. There's no way nobody can stop him. The two of them have lifted each other's games, and together, they'll try to lift the Nets to a championship. They're just a uh, force in this league, and I think everybody knows it. They're the two guys that have to lead. They're great players. So what began as a tale of two cities ends in New Jersey, as these former playground legends have joined forces to become two of the league's brightest young stars. We've just been on the rise, and I think the sky's the limit for us right now. As long as we just come out and just play the game of basketball, I mean, I think the sky's the limit. Six, five, four, Kenny wants to take it himself. Minus the miss, half murder music, the small track. That's how I get back, rhyme, they so intact. Put a dump sack where I've been and where I'm at. Every place that I travel across the fucking map. 
Mall rap from Queensboro with high stats. That's why my style unique, no drawbacks. A step forward every foot that I take. Learn from mistakes, eliminate the fake. My aunt said I was destined to be great. Jackie Brown, y'all move out his way, love you sister So I bring you this murder here today Regardless, see the way you look, we paved the way Boom, by yeah, I lead an all-time great I was cut from that claw for 70s, baby The streets raised me, this is what it gave me Tight jeans, radio that won't play me So the world wide web, I stay surfing Networking, plugged into the system Call it the Matrix, I see with different visions Through the eyes of a madman from prison My intuition that Stay on the edge, the edge Got me focused so we roll 50 deep with guns and sharp bangers Don't fuck with strangers, give them the coat hanger Infamous neck, tie the left hanging Mob life be the set that I'm banging East Coast, Queens Bridge, 4112 Where I dwell, ducking from a jail cell It's like hell on earth, but it ain't over That military hood soldiers the slave boulders, the greatest place on earth, these rap moguls. From a place where stars are born, we marvel. My intuition that mob life I'm living. What's respected and forbidden in this world we live in? Queensbridge for the first side, listen. I want permission from all propositions, listen. A nigga bag sold in the fuck I want in. We ain't family foes, we can't be friends. Mob life from a rap to the world end. I say mine, I'm designed for the world way. With his brilliant basketball imagination, Kenny has ably taken on the task of helping to lead little men into the future and has already earned comparisons to some of the transcendent stars who have borne the standard before him. Unheralded, Archibald has burst upon the NBA scene as the newest of the fabulous little men. On a drive at the other end, beautifully done. He was much better than I ever was. Mentioning the same breath with these guys, you know, especially Tiny Archibald and Isaiah Thomas. Bob Cousy, and that's my main goal, you know, to, to, to get all the accomplishments that these guys have um, achieved. This is one of the best nights of my life. An R.E. album drops. Yeah, We're in the Sauce Awards in L.A. But we didn't tr trust girls because the the... The story we got was Big was set up through girls, so we just was out there, but just us. We shook, cause you know, Big, they killed Big. Yeah. Let's just be 100%. We didn't want to go out. We all sat in the jacuzzi, but then I got out, and I was like, fuck it, let's go out tonight. We went out tonight. You pulled up in the, I don't, I don't remember <laughs> what Benz. It was the Benz, yeah, cherry red, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. drop top, <laughs> yeah. and you playing my album. Yeah. Kenny! Like that, like that, Kenny! Like, I ain't gonna lie, because he's, he's the legend to me. Yeah. So I don't, 
want to disturb him. I'm seeing he's talking actually about me. You had the streets of LA on smash. Yeah. I'm going to keep it real with you. Yeah, I know you're being humble. Yeah, but... But I'm not being humble right now. Yeah. Nigga no, said chip, he said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's niggas who know me. He said, yo, what? I had bunch yeah. of left rack niggas. You yeah, jumped out. Yeah. And then he sees me. He's like, yo, yo, you parked your car in the middle of the street. You see me, you was like... You won't see everybody. It's an R.E. album. <laughs> and you jumped out and you was like, yo, you know what the fuck you got right now? And yeah, I was I like, know. not really. You grabbed me, you like, yo, Pop, Poppy, you good, nigga. Yeah. You got it from the room. But I had never seen a person leave a hundred thousand yeah, dollar car it's real. in the middle of they stopped traffic. When the police came, I <laughs> I'm thinking it's straight out of Compton. <laughs> I'm thinking we going to go down. Shut the fuck up. Go get your ass on the ground now. And the police had came. This is the crazy shit. The police came and said, oh shit, Kenny, you good. <laughs> they knew you, they were yeah. like, and I ain't gonna front, they even let you chill like another yeah. five more minutes. I was yeah. so proud of her, man, because right. nah, thank coming you. from now, nah, it's like full nah. circle for nah, you guys that moment. You, you made me unafraid of LA. Like, single yeah. handed, you oh, know yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. trying to tell you. I was so scared when Big died. 100% yeah. eye to eye, like a man. Yeah. You, the person that wow. single handedly made me, like, yo, you know what? LA, LA can be done. If it wasn't for you in a lot of ways, I wouldn't be here. I, I know you man, don't really on, know man. that. Nah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be yeah. honest because you gave me hope. Kenny, you are a, a New York City basketball legend. Why are players from the NYC so good? Playgrounds, man, I would have to say. You know, how we brought up we brought up in the playgrounds. There's some lot of guys out there that's competitive, that that's probably much better than me. Just didn't have the self discipline. So it's um you know, it was a blessing growing up in the black top in New York and um that was my outlet. That's where I was always to sun up to sun down, man, right in the playgrounds. It's not an easy place to uh, to play play in New York. It takes a strong, thick skinned person to really uh develop and prosper in New York. I'm a walking mistake. I always tell my kids, be better than me, Kenny Anderson. Best point guard I've ever seen, Tom Kinchowski. A very hurt, lost soul, damaged, Natasha Anderson. Remembering Kenny Anderson is a roller coaster ride of opinion and emotion. You may reflect on his greatness or his many falls from grace as a person and player. Re-remembering Anderson as the man I am today, I have to respect his story even more seeing the circumstances he had to overcome. Beginning this feature, I'd like to mention that I like Kenny Anderson as a player and a person. Society paints a picture of success as a man, player, and financially, and if you don't match that picture, you're considered a failure. After researching Kenny Anderson, I would like to send a personal message of respect, reverence, and the highest of admiration for the player he was, the person he's trying to become, and the humility he shows when speaking to anyone of any walk of life. A true legend in the game that sacrificed more than most to achieve the stature he has or had depending on how you see it. In the early to mid 90s, Kenny was the mold of what a point guard was supposed to be. He was smooth on and off the court, had the gift of gab you want from your point guard, perfect size for the era, before point guards morphed into the size and athleticism they have today, could pass, shoot, and had the heart of a lion. Oh, and he was a lefty like myself. His vision was unmatched. His pedigree was certified being from the mecca of basketball and his ascendance in the sport was hasty and brought about an expectation bar to be one of the best point guards to ever live. Did he have a disappointing NBA career? Is he a deadbeat father? A failure post-basketball? Alcoholic? 
Well, I'll let you know how I feel today. One thing I do know is his growth was definitely stunning. Let's get into it. Kenneth Anderson, born October 9th, 1970. It's your boy JC, Stun of Growth. Ash Ketterman. Kenny Anderson is from Queens, New York, left rack to be exact. As an amateur, he was everything to the basketball world across the nation. What he was doing can only be dreamed of replicating. He attended the famed Archbishop Malloy High School, where he was named to the All-State team four times, McDonald's All-American, Parade All-American, and New York Mr. Basketball. His record for career scoring is one that stood until being broken by Sebastian Telfair in 2004. Leaving high school, he was rated the number one overall recruit over Shaquille O'Neal. Anderson was looking forward to staying home and attending Syracuse as his college choice that included Duke and North Carolina. Upon visiting Georgia Tech, his mother, who accompanied him, was convinced that that was the place that would not only take care of her son, but also provide the best opportunity for him to continue his career after college. And she was right. He chose the Yellow Jackets as his choice school, and the rest was history, as they say. Stun number one, youth, the pros and cons. Out of a hundred people, how many, if they could turn back the hands of time and become young and energetic again, not for any sole reason, but just to have that feeling when nothing really mattered, your body was at its most prime self, and it felt like the entire world was in front of you, how many of you would flip that switch? The thing about being young, outside of the physical positives, is that it also comes with being very inexperienced, ignorant, sometimes easily influenced, more susceptible to making mistakes, people from all angles preying on your youth, whether you're a superstar basketball player or not. Being young may seem fun and carefree, but being wise, composed, responsible, experienced, and able to better read your surroundings is something that's priceless to me. For Anderson, many of those cons he had to wiggle his way through while also expected to be the savior of his family, neighborhood, city, and state. Although he obviously at one point became that, it came with a price. Some of that price are things he still goes to therapy for today, which we'll speak on later. The rest of it costed him his longevity and a portion of his legacy. To me, Kenny Anderson should have been a top three to five point guard of all time. But because he was so young, inexperienced, youthfully emotional, and filled with so much love in his heart, especially for the people close to him, it made him make career moves that at the time were gratifying, but in the end, short-lived, and at some point, he went broke because of it. He entered Georgia Tech and was a star from the beginning, started all 35 of his games in the 1989-90 season, averaging almost 21 points a game and over 8 assists, shooting 41% from 3, attempting over 3 a game. He, along with sweet shooting Dennis Scott and Brian Oliver, all averaged over 20 points a game that season and led the Yellow Jackets to the Final Four, where they were defeated by the eventual national champions UNLV, led by previous stunted growth feature Larry Johnson. In that era, and especially in today's, a freshman coming in, having the success he had, would definitely have left for the NBA. But according to Kenny, he knew he wasn't ready mentally, even up to the point when he did leave after his sophomore season. He said he was having way too much fun and that he was comfortable in college. As a sophomore with Dennis Scott and Brian Oliver off to the NBA, Kenny was even better individually. He averaged 26 points a game and an amazing three steals, five rebounds, started every game but one in 38 minutes per. His assist numbers decreased drastically, not having his other 20-point scorers and a more youthful roster. The team also saw a decrease in wins and lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Kenny, although he admittedly wasn't ready, decided to leave school and enter the draft with a top three guarantee. He's to this day the most decorated Georgia Tech point guard of all time, and that's saying a lot. 
His move to the NBA, although beginning very successful, was filled with youthful decisions that led to more growth stunts. He was taken second overall behind Larry Johnson by the New Jersey Nets and in his rookie season backed up former Sonic Road feature Mookie Blaylock. He was the youngest player in the league that year. By his second year, he was beginning to show signs of the player he was drafted to be. He averaged 17 points and 8 assists in 55 games as the starter. In his third season is where Anderson was really staking his claim as one of the league's best point guards. It was his lone season making the all-star team after averaging 19 points a game and 9.6 assists. He played in all 82 games and a career-high 38 minutes a game that year. He and Derek Coleman led the Nets to the playoffs where they lost in the first round to the Knicks. After the season, head coach Chuck Daly resigned and new disciplinarian coach Butch Beard was hired. Immediately, Coleman and Anderson didn't appreciate his style of coaching and prematurely welcomed the idea of playing for another team. Kenny would have his run-ins with Coach Beard for disciplinary reasons, one day even missing practice without warning or call after being benched by Beard a few games prior. After, the coach made it clear that changes needed to be made. And at the same time, Anderson also made it known that he most likely wouldn't return. Whether serious or immature, the team took him seriously, especially after he wouldn't sign his four-year $40 million extension at the beginning of the 95-96 season. The team, who wanted something done earlier, traded Anderson after 31 games to the Charlotte Hornets. In my opinion, New Jersey couldn't have been a more perfect fit for him as a franchise had he bought into what the new leadership were doing and also taking care of business off the floor. With the Nets in rebuilding mode, they could have used a steady point guard like Kenny, and also he could have used a stable situation where he could finally become the unquestioned leader on the floor. His unreadiness and immaturity also showed in a few other areas, such as... Stunt number two, not staying in New Jersey. Elaborating on stunt number one, him handling the New Jersey situation the way he did, which costed him his time there, was another time I think his career took a really important turn. His 38 game finish to the 95-96 season with the Hornets after being traded was his lowest scoring stretch of his career outside of his rookie season at 15.2 points a game in 34 minutes. He was still a tremendous point guard at that point, only being 25 years old, but now on a journey throughout the NBA and not having the comfort and stability of being on one team. As anything in life, if it isn't stable, it's hard to expect and receive optimal performance. Also in a sport like basketball, in particular the NBA, it seems when you're traded, a piece of that thing that makes you special in the eyes of teams chips off and leads to less opportunities given to you. Opportunities to make mistakes, opportunities to lead in the locker room having guys respect your word, and also opportunities marketing yourself. When a player that's been on one team had personal and team success there speaks, you tend to listen more carefully than a journeyman giving instructions. He would play 127 games with the Trailblazers, whom he signed with for reportedly 7 years 50 million after turning down 6 years 42 million in New Jersey. Again, a place that he could have made his own and shaped his legacy for the future. He was traded from there to the Raptors and in another questionable move refused to show up to the team because he didn't want to play in Canada. So he was traded again to the Celtics. Stunt number three, lost his work ethic. This stunt is one directly from Kenny's mouth, so I won't take credit for this. According to him, he just didn't care enough at times in the league. There were times when he knew he should get up and go work out and would decide to do something fun instead. Times he should have stayed in a workout for two hours and would call it after an hour and go spend time with friends or family and enjoy his life. Moves that for one gets very expensive over time because we all know having fun comes with a cost. 
and two, didn't allow his skills to develop into its potential, which is why you see his production over his prime either stay the same or decline. At this time, Kenny was allegedly a full-blown alcoholic that drank before practices and games, stayed out all night with practice the next morning, which led to him either missing altogether or not getting better, which at that point is slowing your growth down and allowing others with less talent and more work ethic to catch up. Also at that point, Anderson is well on his way to building his eight children lineage with five different women who all expect payments from him on time and in some eyes at excess. Million dollars here, million dollars there, and your earnings begin to dwindle before you even know it. Mansions here, there, fast cars, spending time with friends where you're the number two NBA draft pick, so expected to always pick up the tab. And with a big heart like Anderson's who love having people around, saying no is never an option. Then there's his mother, rest in peace, whom he would spoil no matter what he was going through. She calls and says send a million, Kenny's at the Western Union or bank handing it over the next morning like clockwork. Kenny made over $63 million over his NBA career and today he's allegedly worth $800,000. That's worth not cash in the bank or in some Nike book bag. Immaturity, kids, baby mamas, youth, and losing what got him there are the main things that stunted Kenny's growth and caused him to relatively go broke, while also losing his spot in history as one of the best NBA point guards ever. Is he one of the best in New York ever? No question. In college, absolutely. But in the NBA, instead of having a Hall of Fame career as expected, he averaged 12.6 points a game and 6.1 assists. Numbers you would have never guessed would be the case back then. He would go on to play for a handful of teams after Boston, including a stint overseas where it was forgettable seeing one of your favorite guards look like he was just there. Work ethic is the most important thing in life. All great men have that quality. When you lose it, you become an unfamiliar person, to people watching and to yourself. After his playing days, Kenny's life slipped into depression. Therapy sessions, hours reflecting on what he has been and what he did in the past, more than what's in his future in life. Forget basketball. I always say, strive to always give full effort and you'll be compensated for it. A lot has been documented about the relationship with his kids and whether or not he's a deadbeat dad and those things I would never speak on here and disrespect the man like that because his journey is his bed to lay in. As a man, I can respect his privacy in that matter. Another thing I struggle to bring up, and if you've made it this far, it'll be a little extra insight on the man Kenny Anderson is. At some point in his youth, he was molested by a man in the neighborhood whose house he and friends would go to to play games and do other fun stuff until things got physical and scarred Kenny for life, which is what he to this day goes to therapy for. Who knows what that did to his psyche? Maybe it's why he drank so much or found it hard to keep relationships or made it feel as if in this world he only had himself. In his movie, Mr. Chibs, he also speaks about living in the same room with his mother and her boyfriend and watching her be sexually assaulted right in front of him. For these reasons, man, I can't judge Kenny at all, personally. Everything said today is mainly about basketball and said to help someone else in the future. I have a ton of respect for Kenny Anderson and wish him nothing but the best. Hopefully, he can find another coaching job somewhere after losing the high school opportunity he had because of a DUI. Because his knowledge and leadership is so underrated and much needed. To this day, I haven't seen a better basketball speaker and motivator than Kenny Anderson. So it's crazy to see him not out there more sharing his amazing story. All in all, salute to a legend. Love you, Kenny. Hopefully, you take this video well. And best of luck in the future, OG. King Kenny Anderson. Peace. It's your boy Jason's done a growth.